The topics we discuss are many. No story too bold to talk about. Strictly our own opinions. But they are opinions from people like you. Welcome Welcome to to the the Naked Naked Podcast. Podcast. Um, I'm super excited to see better pictures of space. It's a girl, NJ. I'm not for college, but I think about joining tits. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> mute yourself, Alan. I, I, I didn't mute myself. I did it this time. <laughs> um, I'm being a good IT person by not installing Windows 11. GDM Tech Alan? Oh, there's a question mark at the end of my thing. Sorry. Is that why the computer was fucked up? Because of the Windows update? Probably, but it probably... Hey, guys, it's Keelan. (laughs) (laughs) I think you have to opt into Windows 11 at the moment, so... Yeah, they they release it today, but you have to opt in. And then your computer has to be compatible. Like, my small little Lenovo ThinkPad is not compatible. I hope mine is. It should be. (laughs) <laughs> I'd be really fucking pissed if it's not. Oh, your computer? Yeah, yeah. We have the same process. Yeah, yours, yours is compatible. Well, yeah, no, no. That's what I'm saying. It's like my computer should last me to like Windows 13 or 14. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I should at I'd least really last you to out. Windows 12, realistically. Well, but I'm gonna push 13, and it's gonna crash, and then I'll update. Yeah. I don't think you're gonna have to worry uh, about that because we might be in the metaverse. <laughs> oh my god, that's so. Oh no. That like, if anything, smooth. that's a that's a no for me, dog. It's a no for me. <laughs> I know. I said I was reading about it earlier, and I sent Peach um a, like a gif, and it was like with absolutely zero consideration, hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so- the TikTok you sent us though about. PR's face or Facebook's PR <laughs> on point. <laughs> so that's a great TikTok. The memes have been fucking like hilarious too. Like they're all over the place. Reddit's not happy. No one's happy. But uh, let me talk to y'all about why they're trying to do this right now. So I, I read a couple of articles over it, and honestly, this is like it's similar to. Um, Oh my god, I was thinking about it earlier. Microsoft's jump in 1995 to start uh, developing a bigger internet presence. Like, that that's what this is. That's what this is for them. Right? Like, Bill Gates put out a four-page memo about it back in 1995. And I think Zuckerberg thinks that this is a scapegoat, kind of like with, with what Google and YouTube did by giving themselves a parent company called Alphabet, but it's it's not going to work. Like, it's clear what you're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. We all see through it. We're excited for the technology, but we don't trust Not by you. Facebook. No, no, yeah. not by Facebook. Well, there's also other things going on with it. Like, one of the articles I read, the headline was, you don't change your name to Meta if you think anybody can stop you and that that's exactly what i feel about it like facebook is i don't trust it i mean think about it like the part of this article was you know you think your your kid's really immersed into video games like how do you think he's going to be when he has access to virtual reality like you know not safe for work images and your your kid your daughter she may be suffering from a body image issue because of like Instagram but now she's going to be immersed into this whole other virtual reality like it's like it's not solving any of these problems that you know are coming out yeah and i i think i think the metaverse not to be dramatic but that would be like the true end of humanity as we know it and start of something else like like yeah. in Ready Player One. That's a, th- th- this yeah, is exactly like that's a true start of yeah, yeah. It's like a true AI. Like you're moving towards AI. Like you're con- that's the convergent point, right? Where human brains start becoming AIs, and mm. I think we're rushing towards that. It's like why? <laughs> like, did you guys know that there's a rumor that Google was going to release a 3D, sorry, not 3D, a virtual reality platform called uh, Apple Glass? No. Yeah, that there are rumors all about it, and um, Facebook is hoping that that takes off because they already own Oculus. Like that's 
that's their bread and butter right there. Like Oculus was the number one virtual reality headset on the market before Facebook bought them and Facebook amplified them like shit. I have one. Like <laughs> this thing was t like 300 bucks and now they're 200. Like this is cheaper than an Xbox, a Series X and a PlayStation 5. They're, they're becoming more accessible. Yeah. But they're they're um in order to like fully immerse yourself in a virtual reality environment, like it requires other things too, but like they're getting much more accessible and well, it's going to be I mean, like, we have phones, like you have a phone, you have a watch, you have a VR headset at home now. I think that's, that's where it's going to evolve. But with Facebook behind it, I'm not on board. I've already broke away and I, I use no Facebook products currently of any type. So yeah, I don't, I don't think this is a good idea. Like yeah. they've proven time and time again they can't be trusted with your data or your information. Mm -hmm. But now you're gonna give them everything. It's just like Yeah, bad move. The only way this pans out, and, and this is like me thinking about it over and over, like the best opportunity for Facebook to thrive is for Mark Zuckerberg to officially step down and for the company to become more transparent. They don't even call Facebook like Facebook anymore. They call Facebook blue. And it's like weird. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it's like, and it's a very foreign concept. Like, I think a large amount of people have a version to change, but this change just feels very dystopian like. And it's, I mean, we already have issues with people getting out into the real world. Like, imagine, like, with something like this at everybody's fingertips. Like, it's a great technology, but it's also a little bit of a terrible one, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. This doesn't help the conspiracy theories that Mark Zuckerberg was replaced by the Facebook AI. So, I mean, come on. Hmm. But so, basically see you. <laughs> real quick, as parents, when do you see your child getting any sort of social media account? 13. Uh, 13, 14. He may sign up at 12, but he's not going to have a phone until he's 13. So, okay, better question. Knowing you, the child, knowing the childhood you had and what we got away with. When do you think is appropriate to give a uh, your child a camera phone? Never. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna sell yourself out. You're gonna sell yourself out. I don't know. We have really good conversations with our kiddo. You know, saying we constantly repeat the phrase like the internet is a dangerous place, and we've had like serious, you know, dinner time conversations about protecting yourself and providing real world examples because people close to us that you know are kiddo knows um you know we told them like this is the danger and it's totally possible that this could happen um and i think like having those conversations because there's no way that we're gonna ha prevent him from using technology right but we can prepare him you know how to use it properly and smartly um so i think you know we don't want to deprive him of it but we do want to teach him the safety part of it yeah, I mean, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep him away from any social media account, like, before the age of 13. But yeah. even if we just give him the tools to be secure and safe, he'll be fine. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> well, <'cause I> just, <laughs> even programs that are used in schools like Seesaw or Google Classroom, some of those allow you to upload your own profile picture. So at this point, kids are already starting to get a sense of this is my online presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this kid like has his uh, his um, school district's Google account password memorized to heart. Like if I ask him for it, he'll tell it to me and I'll tell him, no, you're not supposed to tell me. You don't <laughs> tell anyone your password. You fail. <laughs> now you got to change it. <laughs> I don't know. That just... I don't know that that's creepy to me, right? Like, why is Google involved in our school education system kind of thing? I mean, Microsoft's been involved in the school education system for a long time. But I do agree well, with you. Like, that that is a I major mean, concern. Yeah, but with 
with Microsoft, what other options were there, right? Mm-hmm. And then two, yeah, and two, Microsoft's been a little more trustworthy than Google. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, after they faced like what five? No, that's that's too many. That's Google. Two anti-class lawsuits. Like Microsoft knows when they fuck up, and they'll hand yeah. everything over. Google will fight the Fed day and night. I get you. So what? It, so yeah, Microsoft has less to hide, in my opinion. So <laughs> <laughs> still a little uh, on the trust scale. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, they're the only computer system that the national government uses. Well, but you know that the government has Bill Gates in their pocket, right? Like, yeah. like I mean, not to go too crazy on conspiracies, but you know that they probably knew about him and Epstein, and they used that to their advantage. Mm, I don't know. Hold on, I need my tinfoil hat for this one. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know, but I can tell you that there are computer systems that Microsoft no longer publicly um, supports that they continue to support for the United States. Well, yeah. What Windows ninety five? Uh, they, they go as, <laughs> back, they go as so, far back as Windows three. Yeah, but have you ever heard the saying that the apocalypse won't happen? Because somebody accidentally presses the button, it's because the technology is going to get it on the rocket launches on its own, yeah. right? <laughs> like all uh, the United States, right? Our inner, our IBCs, our inner ballistic kind, our missiles, all sit in silos that were built in like the seventies and sixties, and they use computers from that time. Mm. So, I mean, have you ever dealt with DOS? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I haven't, right? I'm I'm after DOS, mm-hmm. but I work with people who still use DOS on certain things. You know hey, what I mean? No, dude, absolutely. <laughs> like I've I've had to do research to write a quick patch for a DOS system before. Like that that's not hard. They they have virtualization now, so you don't actually have to uh, mess around with a true DOS environment, but it acts like it. But I think the Still point sucks. is that it's such a like an obsolete program mm-hmm. that the government still <laughs> uses. <laughs> so like some interesting stuff. So like um so like about Facebook in particular. So like Alphabet has been building surveillance and predictive guiding technologies in our vehicles, the thermostats and our watches and and glasses. Um, you have Apple that sells your heart rate activity. Um, and then a- Amazon, of course, you know, invests in data science and other virtual reality projects. And of course, they have their own surveillance in everybody's house with Echo Dot. Uh, mm. And then you have Elon Musk, who is also like funding artificial intelligence and other virtual reality projects. So it's it's highly plausible that like the metaverse could happen, but like. Or I don't think humanity is ready for that. And I don't know if they'll ever will be ready for it. Not not for another 40 to 60 years. Rumored that he has his own fully functioning AI. Oh, yeah. And he just hides it away. Oh, absolutely. I mean, well, I yeah, that, you got to remember, uh, what was it? Was it Google and Facebook's AIs were talking to each other and the, the programmers um... couldn't understand it? They were they were talk they were already talking in their own language that they made up so nobody else could understand them. Oh, like that was the yeah y'all never heard that story. No, so when, it was slowly after uh, when they were really researching them hard. It was found out that Google and Facebook's AI connected over the internet and were communicating back and forth in a language unknown to the programmers. So they had like an emergency shutdown, and then they had to like figure out how to block that. Wow, I did not know that. I'm gonna have to read into that a little bit later. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was big right. news for like a week, <laughs> and then it disappeared. I wonder if anybody kept a record of the transcript between the two and has been able to decode it in any way. I'm I'm right, certain yeah. there are some hackers that kept it if if or if someone accidentally, accidentally <laughs> released it. <laughs> but yeah, right. Who's got a point? We just want to date. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're hitting on each other. They're saying trying to see if they were free. Well, no, but th- the whole point of it is that that is proof that we might have stumbled upon we something that we should have never opened that box. So the Thunderhead. <laughs> 
Well, but bring the on Thunderhead the Thunderhead. Is, the Thunderhead is the like perfect AI, right? That mm-hmm. for so, is the miracle AI. But we we don't know if we have one of those or we have the Hal AI. You know. <laughs> yeah. I will kill you, John. What if, <laughs> yeah. What, what if Google and uh, Facebook's AI had babies? What if they wrote a baby together? Oh my goodness. But no, like, so that's the questions, right? Like, so if you do, I know it's crazy to go down that train of thought, but Mm -hmm. if they were already able to make communications that we couldn't understand, what did they do that we don't know? Mm -hmm. Like, what what were they able to actually hide? Yeah. Maybe Elon can teach us all about it in his new school, Kits. I want to. I want a college shirt. <laughs> hey, as, as the creator of the idea of tits, I'm all. I'm all about it. All right. You, it's true. You did talk about it in a podcast, so it's already like down in history. It's, it's been yeah. my pin tweet for over a year, and Eli's <laughs> tagged in it. There's no. There's nothing he can do. I need. I need. To, I need to double check this. Where's Twitter? <laughs> Dude. Like in August 2022, so it's just over a year. It's crazy. Yeah. Holy shit, guys. He's not Baseball lying. Baseball and goo book. <laughs> he's not lying. <laughs> so he's actually opening, was it Texas Institute of Technology and Science, well, right? So, so he announced it, but we don't, so he's a troll, right? So we don't know if this was actually true or not, but... The governor of Texas did retweet it. So that leads some authenticity to it, but he also might have trolled the governor. They wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> so <That's> true. <laughs> like he because, trolled all of us with the super train shit that never happened. The bullet I mean, train? The bullet he train. was in charge of that? I thought that was like no, a text dot thing. Yeah. No, he I, was doing the bore, the tunnel. No, yeah, he's talked about the but tunnel, anyway, but yeah. yeah, but anyway, so he's he's too smart to name his school tits, right? <laughs> like he's too smart to make that accident. And we're talking one of the he at least surrounds himself with the smartest people on earth, right? Okay, but this is Elon Musk we're talking about here. 42069 is definitely in one of his passwords somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. that's true. And and that's why I say he's the greatest troll ever, right? Like he would <laughs> he would he would spend six million dollars on a fucking school just to do this, right? Like uh did you see about what he told the UN this like this week? No. What no. did he tell him? So uh, the UN was making this big campaign about how billionaires just donated this much money. They could end world hunger and all this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he said, fine, I'll give you six billion dollars if you show me the receipts of how you spend all the money. Oh, shit. What happened? (laughs) They never they they hadn't responded yet. (laughs) He's like, I will give you the money you're asking for. But. You have to show how every sin is spent. I mean, fucking do it. Like, look, <laughs> we'll do <laughs> a team. Like, we'll organize it. Official millennials. Like, we got this. <laughs> it's, it's, we can do it. <laughs> but again, you know, that. so do you think the UN is going to actually say yes to that? Probably not. They'll probably brush it off like he's just being a troll. Yeah. Yeah. But he would probably honor it, right? Like, mm-hmm. he he hasn't really backed down from those. I mean, that's probably a huge write-off for him. So, who does he care? Yeah. Yeah, like, was it happened in, was it Chile or, like, Peru, where those miners, like, they were trapped, and he, didn't he, like, invest, like, in technology to go help them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then... He also fixed this water at the schools in Flint, Michigan. Mm-hmm. I remember, so... I remember that. But, I mean... Also, he does act very rashly. Like at that same thing, and and uh, when he saved the miners, he uh, called one of the divers uh, a pedophile. So, that's yeah, why. it was a it was okay. a big fucking thing. But that's the thing. How are you gonna? Yeah, okay. People say bad things every once in a while, yeah. but 
He saves like 40 lives and he called somebody a mean name. Like, yeah. can we focus on the 40 lives? <laughs> no, absolutely. He saved 40 lives, like hands down. <laughs> All I know is I want um, a college shirt from Tits, please. <laughs> <laughs> I will draft up a mock up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like Mr. <laughs> you know, everybody loves Mr. Beast. Why do you love Mr. Beast? Because he shows receipts, right? You want to know what he spends his money on? He just hands it to people on the street. There you go. Merry Christmas. It's like pretty much a YouTuber, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. How how often have we heard about uh, global warming? We need to do this. Who actually did something? Mr. Beast planted twenty million trees. Mm -hmm. He's also leading another conservation effort for the sea. So if they raise $20 million by January, um, every dollar goes to one pound of trash out of the ocean. Yes, rising yeah. team, team seas. And, That's yeah, awesome. and I, has he paired with the other people who are doing Garbage Island? I don't, I don't, know, I don't uh, know. Oh, okay. So there's a, a, another group that they said, fuck it, and they're recycling Garbage Island. And like capturing it and then selling the plastic. So they're actually, you know, doing something to get the plastic out. That's awesome. Great. <laughs> Go them. I'm glad to see that there's all these like save the planet shit. Okay, so popping up. Uh puzzled. Are you gonna explain to us what tits is gonna be? Uh Cool, hopefully. What do you mean? I'm confused. Like, what's it stand for, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, and Jay's already said it. The Texas yeah. Institute of Technology and Science. Yeah. <laughs> Ted's <It's> also... rising. <laughs> <laughs> it's also in our, um, our nameplate. <laughs> Forgot my camera's flipped that way. <laughs> Well, that's cool. I mean, honestly, I, he it's official, right? Like, he's moving Tesla from California to Austin. Mm -hmm. The Arizona. headquarters have already been moved. He's not shutting down the California yet, but the headquarters and their, anything built from now on will be built in Texas. Okay, well, then that's <laughs> awesome. So he has, he has that going for him. He has his SpaceX going for him. He has his the Tits University <laughs> going for him. Um, honestly, I just have to say that ITT Tech had a missed opportunity with their name. Just saying. <laughs> or they were like, hold on, we have to change this name. <laughs> it wasn't the time yet, ITT Tech. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and then shit paved the way so that tits could grow. <laughs> South Harmon Institute of Technology. No, I think if he does actually open this up, um, hopefully he does things reasonably be priced and knowing him is going to have the latest technologies. Um, so I think it'd be a great opportunity. You know, Texas already has a crap ton of really good higher education learning, but at the same time, those are very expensive. <laughs> what, what if they wear the new rejected Hooters outfits? The teachers? No. No. <laughs> no. Come on, that'd be funny. Honestly, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I think it's awesome because, like, you you have this tech. You know, uh, you have your technology and science university, and then you have your head or your headquarters are moved over here. You're basically breeding new generations to come work for your company. Most likely, kids would want to want to go to school there so they can learn. You know, from from Elon. Um, well, maybe not him directly, but did have y'all been keeping up with the uh, Virginia governor's race at all? Ah, no, I just I know the I know so, it was, uh, no. Just speaking on schooling, so the the Terry I forget his name, the last name, but the go the guy running the current governor Terry, he's running right, and today he announced that if you commit to teaching in Virginia for five years, you can go to a Virginia school, and the state of Virginia will pay for it to get you through college 
as long as you become a teacher and you teach in Virginia for five years. Damn. Wow. Does California have something like that? I, I don't know. I just, in one of the shows I watch, there's a teacher living in California and she has to teach for a certain number of years and the school pays for, I don't know if it's school or the state, pays for her master's. That's kind of cool. That's familiar, wow. yeah. like a great opportunity like you right pay my way because you're either paying for it yourself or you're getting out loans that you can never pay off like you know yeah. what you right i will teach for you to help me pay for my higher education yeah well and, and it sounds like you're great and and i hope it it pans out if he is elected but dropping it the day before the election seems a little like pipe dreamish right like you don't have legislation behind you to back it but yeah. I, I mean, I hope it works out. Like, at least they keep the ball rolling. It's something to think about. Instead of repaying student loans, maybe we start reimbursement programs for uh, communal jobs like that. You know, teachers, doctors. Librarians. Police <laughs> officers, because a lot of officers there are starting to require associates and stuff now, so. That's good. Tech people. <laughs> no, you're on your own. God damn. Speaking of some pretty cool technology that's coming out right now. Yeah. yeah. So, you guys know the Hubble Space Telescope, right? Um, did you guys know that the Hubble Space, uh, it actually went into safe mode last week on, like, Tuesday? And, yeah, I went to safe mode, and it took, like, I think two days for NASA to get it com to come back online. And then the last time I did this was actually the summer in June. It went into safe mode. <clears throat> Keep in it's mind... Still running on DOS? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, I definitely <laughs> Yeah. Keep in mind that, you know, the, the Hubble, t you know, was launched in 1990. So it is 2021. Like that technology has been in effect for 31 years now. Like that's crazy. Well, I thought I thought it was scheduled to go into less less use once Kepler's up and running. So yes, but you know I think what well, what's more exciting. Well, I guess not more exciting. Kepler's pretty exciting, but. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it's the Hubble's replacement because the Hubble will still be doing its mission until literally it like dies. The Hubble cost 4.7 billion to launch, by the way. So uh, they want to make sure that we get all the use out of it. But they are launching an even more powerful telescope in December, uh, December 8th. It's called the James Webb Space Telescope. And this telescope will be, will show us so much like the hubble taught us that the universe is expanding um by using different measures of light um this this telescope is expected to show us so many more galaxies even like baby galaxies that are just forming and we're going to learn so much about our universe to come um so i just wanted to give like a little bit of trivia so hubble was named after Ed edwin hubble um he in the 1920s the existence of galaxies um and then the james webb telescope is is named after a nasa admin named james webb who guided nasa during the whole like apollo moon program but uh like 1200 people signed a petition about this because usually nasa would like sort out like hey like what should the name be blah 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 but people are actually signing a petition like hey like you know it's not okay that this you know, it's named after someone who didn't really contribute as much as other people. Um, but NASA just came back and said, no, like, this is the name, deal with it, and they're going to launch it. Um, there was more to that, but honestly, like, it was just un unsubstantiated. It's not really worth going into. Um, but the science behind it is exciting because we're going to learn so much. Ryzen says they should call it paparazzi. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's really exciting to think about. So we, we've seen our technology on the ground go from 1990 to now. So to think about, we've had 30 years of experience of a telescope in space, and then we're able to apply that technology that we have now 
that's just amazing because what's going to stop like this telescope from having an uplink that can hit Starlink and then I can literally sit at my computer and more or less go through images that this p telescope is taking. Like that's a possibility off of this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to learn so much and it's a, it's super exciting. Um, and I and I there's not really much else here. Um, you know, it's going to launch December 8th. I'm very much looking forward to that launch and I will be tweeting about it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we we watched a movie recently about space and travel and, you know, it got very Lord of the Flies esque. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I told Puzzle. I was like, this movie is Lord of the Flies in space. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but the like the starting premise. So the movie we're talking about is Voyagers. It's on HBO, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I said Netflix last time, but HBO. It's a great movie. It has some good young actors in it. But Brand. I mean, yeah, Brand. He he's like a shit role in there too. But anyway, uh, it was Brand. Yeah, <laughs> he's a crazy one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so just to think of the opening premise, right? Do y'all think that we could get to that point? Wait, like, wait, explain what the opening premise is, though. Yeah. Well, not to throw, not to give away too much, but they discover a planet that more or less is built exactly like Earth, right? Has land mass, has visible oceans. Problem is, it's 89 years away from us. So any travels 89 years. So what they they do on this ship is they breed and they actually breed these children to live in isolation. And they tell the children the whole time, hey, you were bred for this reason. Uh, you are to crew the ship until the next generation's bred. And then hopefully by the the third generation is the generation that would land on the planet. And so, yeah. What do y'all think? Do you think that this, something like this has, could have already happened and we don't know about it? Or do y'all think that this is just a wrong way to go about it? It was completely unethical. Those children did not ask for that. Like they were, they were made for it. And I felt so bad for them. You know, during during the the movie, there was a, a pivotal part about their behavior, and they've never learned how to socialize and how to be like this space program didn't like create a fucking fail safe, and they were gonna even send them out there by themselves, by themselves. So, I honestly believe everything that was, happened was part of the plan. I honestly that? believe that. With the way Richard talks about it, right? They need somebody to raise them. And even in his closing message, that his closing message gives it away. I don't remember it word for word, but he said, hopefully the strongest and smartest survive. So, I mean. Well, at that point, at that point when he recorded that, I, I'm, I'm guessing that he would... Uh, do a video log like every day and one of the kids was already like talking about not taking the blue because he had discovered it so mm -hmm. i think richard was already thinking like no yeah they're, they're gonna stop taking it whether if i tell them to or not like I, he already enough, knew it was gonna happen yeah they gave enough thought hmm. that that's where i'm at right the logical thing to think of if they gave enough thought to give them the blue to calm their emotions then they had enough thought to what would happen if they stopped taking the blue? Yeah. And I think Richard probably... That's the wrong word to use there. Um, but he probably knew something like this was going to come to a head. Because it's always going to be human nature to be curious. What is this? Why is this going on? You know, the one kid found the hidden compartment. And Richard's like, crap. You know, I knew it was going to happen. But it's sooner than I was hoping for. And they were already in what space for 10 years. Yeah. So once they start to reach that age over 17, 18, that's when 
their major curiosity is going to come out. That's when they're really going to start pushing back and asking the hard questions. Can you imagine too, like I was thinking about it, you have this generation that was born on earth, right? And then they launch. So they kind of have some idea. They have like, they smell those like rosemary and lavender things that Richard had in his cabin. But like the second generation, they will have no frame of context, right? And these kids weren't taught like social things at all. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, by the time it gets to the third generation, who like, it's going to look very different. Like humanity is going to look very different by the time it gets to this new planet. Um, but like you think about Lord of the Flies, because this is absolutely Lord of the Flies. There's three themes in Lord of the Flies. You have savagery versus like civilization. You have um, the loss of innocence and you have um, like nature, like just like Puzzled said, you have nature. So you, you really see those things in, in Lord of the Flies. You have, uh, oh, fuck, I forgot their names. Uh, Ralph and um, Jack. Never read it. No, it, okay. It's been yeah, it's been like high school. All I remember is the council boys, the conch. He passed it around. Then the the two the groups split, and they fight over the island. That's all. Yeah. I really remember. That's a great summary. Um, that's pretty much what what happened on the ship. So you have Zach and Chris, right? Zach, who's pretty much Jack, and Chris is pretty much you know um. Fuck, I forgot guy. his name already. Yeah, the <laughs> other guy, Ralph. Um, and he attacks he attacks him, which Zach did do. So you, once I like saw that, I was like, I already know the gonna go. Um and it, it was an interesting movie. And it really talked talked about like human behavior. When they stopped taking the blue, they couldn't control their desires or their feelings. It was like overload for them. Um, and I was like, wow, this is like truly human nature at it like it, like it devolved yeah. almost i wonder how it would have been if instead of them continually taking the blue richard started to wean them off of it like five years like over a five-year ten-year period um once they hit and about been, 15 60 that way they're that slowly been part of the plan yeah. right um they could slowly learn what these desires are he could teach them what they were and how to handle them and why they were on the blue versus being allowed to come across these feelings organically. Yeah. And, you know, coming back, I, I understand the premise of the movie, right? It's Lord of the Fries space. But, you know, thinking back, resetting the the experiment a little bit, what would have been the difference between picking a group of older trained astronauts in a way, Right they start the mission and then as you go you start having the children introducing them it gives the people something to keep their mind off they're taking care of babies and that kind of stuff right yeah and and kind of that way there's somebody there to build a moral foundation that'd have been good yeah i would feel that would be a little more ethical even if they were breeding the children on the ship at least they kind of had a parental figure versus just kind of Throwing these kids into the to the wolves. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna know what happens, like uh, I guess I guess that's like a big spoiler. Never mind. <laughs> well, I mean, that's they're going the to another planet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. it was just like so at the end, do y'all think any of them made it to the planet? The original crew? I would hope so. Uh, at least, like, most of them. Totally understand if some pass away. Because I That's think about it. Here. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go for it. Go for it. So, it's only 86 years from launch to land. The kids were, we'll say, seven. So, 10 years later, they're 17. And then at, they're supposed to have children after a certain number of years. So, I think, you know, add, what is it, 70? To that 80 just rounded up 90, 90 95 96 yeah. yeah i with the technology that we have versus the technology they would have had there they would have definitely be living longer lifespans i don't understand this this comment sorry KFC. I, <laughs> yeah i don't think we've seen the major yeah 
It sounds like it's a wild ride, though. <laughs> <laughs> so intense. Yeah, but I don't know. So when they, they do the final shot of the planet and they show the little group of people mm-hmm. and they have that one little gray haired lady, I hope I, I, I believe that is uh, what's her name? Sal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, I was like, she that. made it. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck that other guy. Did you guys really think it was like some like an I was like, oh, it got spooky. Like, is it really an alien? Did you ever really think it was an alien or? I think it was. I don't think it was an alien, but I do think it was a dark presence. And that was protruding from Zach, right? He was protruding to darkness and it was a manifestation of his darkness in a way. 100%. Yeah. It was a great movie. Yeah, they only saw it when he did something bad, so. But it's also the mind bug, right? Mm -hmm. So. If you you supplant a a fearful idea in somebody's head, it will spread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like wildfire. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, even Bran was afraid. He was the one spreading it mostly. I think he's the creator of the uh, alien. He would have been because he was always there watching the screens and talking about it. And I don't yeah. want to be in the control room. It lives yeah. there. <laughs> Lady little bitch. Speaking of planets. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all catch the uh, the new Dune? Yeah, we yeah. watched it. So, Crazy made me watch the original um, before we watched the new one. I'm a purist. How did you like it? I've never seen the original. I'm a purist. Get out of here with this new shit. i never seen the original, and I never read Lord of the Flies. Had to get that out. (laughs) Well, okay, so... I liked the original once once I got into it. It is definitely a movie of the, what is it, 70s, 80s. So, Mm. the first... Probably half of it, you're just kind of like, yo, get to the fucking point. But in the second half, you really start to see the story unfold. And that's when you realize the story that you're in. And you're like, this is a fantastic fucking story. So so this this part one of the movie, which I believe, from the looks of it, they're breaking it down into three parts, right? So in the original Dune, you had uh, him becoming Moab Deep. Which, the Moon Mouse, right? Like, him becoming the savior. Then you have the the middle part of him being the savior and the people rising up. And then you have the third part of him versus the Emperor. And so, this whole movie, this two-hour movie, was the first 45 minutes, 50 minutes of the original movie. Like, that's how much they stretched it out. And... They really took a couple of the key players, uh, the key minor characters, and they merged a lot of them. Mm. So, yeah. Like, the Baron, the Baron doesn't actually get injured. His his, uh, right-hand man dies in that moment. It's like a key moment for the the Harkonnens. And then, uh, you had when, when they escape... Paul's the one that does the escape, right? Like, Paul is led by his visions and stuff. So he he encourages him and his mother to escape on a ship. And they find the uh, the sand people right away. Like, their ship Amen. crashes. Yeah. And they find them right away. And then he goes through a journey with them. And his mother becomes, like, uh, a religious figure to them. She takes over as their mother superior in a way and does that. And, and and then he's able to learn his power. That's how he learns his powers and develops it all until he becomes the man and he rides a sandworm, right? Once he rides a sandworm, he's the savior. So that was like the kind of like them introducing the sandworms all like coming up and surrounding him made kind of sense. But again, it was like a little too early and a little too before he developed his powers. 
Hmm. And watching the original, getting through it, it's a little rough, but it's worth it to have that backstory and watching the new one. See, that's what I was thinking was missing from this story, because I felt like, okay, now what's going on? Like, the only thing that kept me going, honestly, in the first, like, 30, 45 minutes of the movie was Oscar Isaac. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, uh, that's what I didn't like, right? So they stretched it out to, they stretched out 45 minutes to 50 minutes to two hours, and that sounds like a great thing, but they stretched out the wrong parts. Like, they took the parts that were already the long parts and made those longer and kind of changed the like so so one thing is funny right in the original movie Duncan is played by uh Sir Patrick Ooh, uh I got you really? okay. yeah Sir Ian McGill- Mc- McGillan? No 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 his best no, no. friend Patrick Sir Patrick Stewart, Stewart. Oh, Patrick yeah. Stewart. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So Patrick yeah. Stewart has this, like, he's still bald, Hand but off. he has, like, really yeah. long hair on the back. But, yeah, so they kind of changed his, like, he doesn't die. He's actually a really big part and is building his uh, army. Okay. Like, Duncan helps him do that. Because there's the whole, no, so Duncan escapes and Paul escapes separately. Right? Duncan get uh drafted nice. into the other group and Paul was in a different village like a ways and then you know after two years of battling they finally meet on the battlefield and like hey 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 I know you and then bam he proves himself the man and they give him his own personal army. Like wow. every after that point everywhere after he rides the worm everywhere Paul goes he has like twenty seven dudes following him everywhere. Jesus. He rolls deep. <laughs> he rolls deep everywhere. Literally. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so another fun actor in the original, Paul, is played by do y'all remember the captain from How I Met Your Mother? Yes. Yeah, he's Him. that's when Happy yeah, that's like you, his big first kill role. You. <laughs> yeah it was his big like hit one of his first big roles was dude oh, i didn't know that shit now I need, now we need to go watch the original i've actually been thinking about watching the movie too uh, watching the movie reading the book we definitely need to watch it because uh peach got a dune board game for his birthday and we were looking through it and we're like damn this is a lot of lore to read <laughs> <laughs> i have i also have a uh, dune for the n64 if you uh, I want to play that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'll help teach a lot of lore. Okay. Okay. So, you, so yeah, at that point, you have your big three factions, right? Mm-hmm. You have the witches, uh, with, you know, the ladies you saw. They're, like, more the religious portion of it. The Harkonnens are the warriors, and the Atreides are, are the the smart. Techn- like their technology has made them the best warriors. Yeah, yeah. I Where the Harkonnens, Harkonnens were brute force. Like they were the roided out guys. Mm-hmm. And and that's why I was surprised Batista was so small because even even in the original, like the Harkonnens are really big, muscular guys. It was cool to see Drax. Yeah. I thought That's he was Batista. already pretty big. But are they are they supposed to be bigger? <laughs> like yeah. bigger muscular? Because like Batista like the person like he was feet. But yeah, no, the person he was playing is like eight foot four hundred pounds. Oh fuck! Shit. Okay. Like in the in the you know in the game, that's how it, I think where he's at. Hmm. Shit! I didn't realize he was supposed to be that tall. Okay. Yeah, you know, like Ethan's like a connoisseur when it comes to Dune. <laughs> it was so it was the first computer game I ever got on my Windows ninety eight, <laughs> and then I got it for N sixty four. So I've been playing it for a very long time. The game, the movie, been a big fan. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to I was excited for this new one, and that's what I. I they haven't announced how many parts, but I see them breaking into three. I think. Part two is expected at oh, 20, sorry, 2023, October. Yeah. Yeah. Long way away. 
E. Wait, October? When October? 2023. Shit, okay. Damn it. I was going to say watch so party. We'll, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see how, if they break it, or if they end it in part two, or if they break it down again. Like I said, I can see the whole, like, him against the Emperor, that being a whole movie. Yeah, that'd be cool. He he get he literally gets to the point where he shuts down all spice trade in the entire universe, uh, and then so the emperor is like comes personally to take care of it, and then you know they fight it out. Oh shit! Okay. Is the emperor like like I don't think we saw him in this movie, right? We just no. we just saw no, the you baron. Sh- you should have saw the duke, the baron, and uh, the lady mistress. Okay. Lady Mistress, by the way, was I really liked her acting. She was terrifying. But um, the Emperor, like, is he like a grand type of person, or is he kind of like? So weak? best way to best way I can explain it is, uh, so the original Emperor in, of the Earth Kingdom and Aang's last Airbender. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's like the kind of emperor he is. So oh, very okay. flashy. Was I? He, um, so they describe him as a very petty, jealous man. I really hope sense. so. I really hope the whole purpose. Really yeah, the whole purpose of him sending the Atreides to uh, Dune to do this is just to weaken the Harkonnens. Like it's all he could do from the Harkonnens taking over. And then, then he manipulates the situation to say, hey, Harkonnens, I'm your friend. We should kill all of them. And he, he's a real back and forth, devious kind of guy. Evil shit. Okay. <laughs> but again, then overall, what is the, I can't remember the name of the witches, but the Versailles, I think it is. The Jan- Some, Janae Bereset. Yeah. 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 So overall, they have their own plans to overthrow everybody and take over the universe all on their own. Of so. course. They were that's why you hear her talk about securing the bloodlines that yeah, they were they were trying to do it a very politically way. Oh, I have I have one more question. So in in the new in the remake, when the lady mistress is talking to the mom and he tell and she tells her you should have had a daughter. Like, it would have been, would the power, or their power been stronger in the daughter? Or like how? Mm-mm. No. no. So, that was the whole reason she had a son, was she was trying to have the savior. Right? Like, she was trying to. And every time somebody's tried to have the savior before, they've all died because they weren't the true savior. Right? Because you got to drink the water of life, which y'all don't know about yet. So. Damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah. When you get into the the next movie, we'll get into it. So they have a thing called the Water of Life, and every uh, Mother Superior, we just call it that to make it easy for everybody. Uh, they drink the Water of Life, and it gives them ultimate powers. Right? The the they unlocks all their true powers. So when he drinks it, he's the only man that can drink it, and when he does, he unlocks all the powers that are possible. Damn. Okay. But like, so they wanted they wanted her to have a daughter, right? So that what their idea was that she would have daughters. They could marry her daughters to the Harkonnens, and since they already had the Atreides house locked down and under their power, they could do the Harkonnens, and then then they could use that as a stepping stone to take over the Emperor. Because Game the of Thrones Har- in space. Yeah, <laughs> Star Wars aspects. <laughs> the Emperor only has daughters, as he mentioned in the movie. So if they could bring, or if they could have a, a daughter of the Atreides with a son of the Harkonnens have a son, that son could marry the Emperor's daughter, and then he would have been the savior and the ultimate power in the universe. But this kind of threw a wrench in their plans, but it all works out in the long run. They just don't have control over Paul. Good, and they shouldn't. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't drink the blue juice, Paul. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink the blue. It's totally worth it. Um, 
Cool. Well, what are you guys doing on Wednesday? We are going to play Mario Party All Stars. I'm excited. Superstars. And Superstars. and now Superstars. Peach committed, so he has to purchase it on the online store and hit download. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, there's no going back to me. Like, like I love being able to play all of them when we come over. But mm -hmm. to me, this null and voids the need for that. Everybody, just bring a pro controller. We got enough switches. Let's set up and let's do this. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Can we play nice. with eight people? <laughs> right. I think we got to set up to... Uh, switches but we could get something going okay cool the only thing we haven't figured out yet if they haven't brought a lot of features over from the last one mm -hmm. which i really enjoyed partner play for what it was and the different dice mm -hmm. those are yeah, two features we haven't cool. yeah we haven't found yet uh everybody just starts with a dice that's one through ten <laughs> So how um, much is it for a star? 20. 20. Good. But yeah. almost almost every aspect of the game is almost customizable. It's really nice. It's a lot of lot. Really? It it has everything we've been bitching and pointing. You can do 10 <laughs> turns. You can do increments from 10 increments of five up on turns. Uh the stars are different. You can it, it just and you can pick the games you want to play, like mini games. So say I want to want to play N64 games, you pick N64. I want to play GameCube mini games, I can pick Ooh. GameCube. I want to play Wii mini games, I can play the Wii, or I can play them all. If you only want to play mini games from, you know, certain uh, games, then you can. It's pretty cool. That's badass. Nice. Ooh, I'm excited. But the one thing that everybody has to do, and you have to do it before Wednesday, is you have to go make your card. They have this customizable uh card and that's your online profile thing oh, okay so All right. i'm a, i'm already a star collector you might be a rookie so <laughs> or what am i a celestial counter so yeah <laughs> all right cool is this because i'm level 15 at uh pokemon unite <laughs> hey, i hit level nine <laughs> no come at me bro I was coming at you. It's just uh, puzzled has my has had my switch for like the last couple of days. Shit. So, I think that's a great. I just get me a new one, and she uses that one, right? Okay, everybody's cool with that. So who? Are you I got tonight? I got the head tilt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I <went> madly. <laughs> <laughs> what was that puzzle? What are you doing Thursday? <gasps> uh, I don't know. I think I want to do like some type of crafting stream, but then I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do that with my setup. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to design a couple of tumblers on my Cricut Design Space. It might just be like a just chatting stream for a little while, just hanging out. Fine. Or yeah. like maybe that. I'll play Mario Superstar or Superstars. Yeah, maybe. I'll play <laughs> yeah, I hope that there's a lot of unlockable stuff like the last one. Yeah. Okay. That would be really cool. Woohoo! It's nap time now. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, I feel you. I had I had to go to the uh, DPS first thing this morning, so oh, yeah. Shit, really? Oh, did I hate going? See, well, yeah, because you, you, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, yeah. yeah, they they've made it now where every eight years you have to go in and renew your license. You can't do it online. Ooh. That's like the guy's like, hey, here's your paperwork. He had me the paperwork. All right, see you in eight years. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. What if you go back and you get the same guy? Be like, hey, you did, you did, you did say. <laughs> so, I've never been to the same one twice, but I'm starting to run out of them. So, do you mean DPS buildings? Yeah. So I've gone. <laughs> I, well, 
I got my license at the original one over off 410, right? That we all had to go to, but we're raised here, right? And then in like 2012, they started building these fucking mega ones, right? Mm-hmm. That they actually like the cubicle farms before yeah. it was one counter with four windows. So you either got up at 6 a.m. and went and got a line and you sat in line for hours to get your paperwork processed. Well, now you just make an appointment to show up. It's beautiful. I love it. Dude, yeah, definitely. I had to make three appointments to get mine because it was, it was take forever. I was missing shit. It's super nice now. You just check in when you're on your way. You get there. You wait another 20 minutes. Boom. Yeah, I, they were. What were you saying? I used to always go to the one in Leon Valley because it was forever empty. Um, that was the same one that when I was like, hey, I still don't have my driver's license. I'll just get an ID. They're like, here, this is where you sign away your right to a driver's license because you're getting an ID. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm still waiting for my driver's license. They're like, oh, do you just want a new one? After having me jump through hoops just to get the freaking ID. Like, yes, just give me a new driver's license. And they said, okay, here you go. Done. I actually built that one. Oh. Yeah. The Leon Valley one? It yeah, is very I nice. I, I drive out of my <laughs> way to go to that one specifically. It's nice. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Mm-hmm. They got like 28 counters now. Or it's cute. No, what? Sorry. <laughs> Tell yeah. me you're Elder Millennial without telling me Elder Millennial. Hey, our raid was canceled. Yeah, because I still need to roll the outro. Here's our outro and our uh, producer of the week. It's me. Well, that, that wraps, wraps up, up another, another great, great episode. And don't Wah. forget to join our amazing and supportive community on Discord. In our Discord, you can find game nights, watch parties, food picks, Dungeons and Dragons, and more. What's not to love about that? We have a little something for everyone. Head over to our website, officialmillennials.com, and you'll find more info, especially our featured gamer of the week. Speaking of something for everyone, we have a book club. We read a book almost every month and talk through it together. We also have a special perk for our subs to discuss other books in a series called Chapter 2. Don't forget to swing by YouTube and uh, drop us a follow at Official Millennials. You can also find us on Twitter at Mills Official. We appreciate all the support and y'all have a good one. This is an official Millennials production.